Welcome to How It Works, a video series from Law Sites in which you get to see hands-on demonstrations of legal tech products directly from the developer. Today's feature product is LinkApp by Mobile Helix. And to tell us about it, I'm joined by Seth Hallam, CEO, co-founder, and chief architect. Before I welcome Seth, I want to tell you to stay tuned to the end because we're going to give you a code for a discount or a free trial on LinkApp. Seth, welcome to How It Works. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. Pleasure to speak with you. Tell us about the Link app. So the Link app is an app to make lawyers more productive, but with a keen eye to security. Our goal is to deliver the most secure experience you can imagine on a mobile device, but at the same time to make lawyers more productive with their documents, their emails, and in general, everything they need to do to get their work done. And we want them to be able to do that anytime, anywhere on the device of their choice. And so what kind of mobile device is going to work on? So right now we work with iOS. We are early in the process with Android. We have a beta app out for Android and we're working hard on that. But we intend to be on every device. It's on to Mac OS next, Windows after that. And really wherever lawyers go, we want to be over time. Why should attorneys use this? What does it enable them to do? So our goal with the Link app is to ask the question, first, how do we ensure that the data that is the lifeblood of a law firm stays secure in a world that is increasingly threatened by cyber threats far beyond what we would have imagined five or even 10 years ago? I don't know that any of us outside of those who are paranoid about such things would have imagined that the East Coast would be shut down from gasoline because of ransomware, but that's the world we live in. So as an attorney, you have a huge obligation to your clients and to your partners to ensure that the data that you work with every day that is personal, confidential, and extremely critical to your clients and counterparties is kept safe. But how do you do that without making any compromise in your productivity? In fact, how do you do that while becoming even more productive? And that's where we came to the Link app. It's an opportunity to look at the unique features of a mobile device and over time to look at the unique features of all of our modern devices that are touchscreen enabled, that have different security paradigms than we had 10 or 15 years ago, and try to make an experience that allows lawyers to do exactly what they need, but all inside of a secure sandbox so that they don't have to worry that that data is going to be compromised, even if their device is lost, stolen, or otherwise hacked, destroyed by ransomware, you name it. Can you uh, show us how it works? Show us a little bit about it. Sure. So I'm going to start by giving a demonstration of the Link app on an iPad. And the first thing that I'm going to show you is just the experience of getting into Link. One of the reasons that we really love iOS devices and mobile devices in general, tablets in general, is that from the second that you sit down to your mobile device, the amount of time it takes you to get to the point of being productive is so much faster than even my best Windows laptop experience or even the Mac that I'm using for this Zoom presentation. Within seconds, I have my iPad on, I'm in Link, and I'm ready to get to work. And so the first place that you start in Link is your landing page where your IT department, your administrators have set up your personalized view of what it is you need to do in order to work. Since we're talking about lawyers here, that's really about documents and email fundamentally with an additional aspect of the intranet and those things that have been prepared by IT for you that might be LexisNexis, internal resources, et cetera. So this is where we start the landing page of Link. So these applications aren't native to the app. These applications are configured within the app. Is that right? Well, basically these tiles are, we call them apps, but really what are they? They're web applications that are running inside of our customer's environment. So generally behind the firewall, it could be in the cloud. It just depends on how our customers like to work. But these are the, 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 the set of things that IT has decided lawyers should see. And mm -hmm. it's customizable to each different role within the firm. Okay. That said, we have built our own user interface, which I'll show you in a minute, to access things like iManage and email, et cetera, that we've uniquely tailored to the needs of lawyers. Everything in here runs inside of our secure environment. This app itself, is its own secure container, which means that all data that it touches is encrypted in our own special way, independent of the device, independent of the device operating system, using our own encryption technology. And that's why we call it a secure container. So let me start by just giving you an introduction to some of the things that you can do in Link. 
As I mentioned, access to files and email is sort of the starting point. We also have the internet built in as well. Let's take a look at a really typical thing that a lawyer might want to do. You might receive an email from a client, and that email might have a document attached that someone has revised in some way or another. You can, of course, open the document, but the first question that you want to ask is, what has changed in this document from the one that I sent to this counterparty? So one of the things that we built into Link is the ability to compare documents. So you can very quickly decide that you're going to run a red line on this document. You can go find the original document in your document management system. Run the comparison against that document, and now you have a high fidelity red line that shows exactly what changed. And a nice summary up here that tells you that a few important things changed. You might notice that there are some numbers here that changed, the 80 and the 20, that might look important. So you might slide that around to get it a little bit bigger. You notice that you still have your email here on the left, so that if you want to look at what was sent to you, you can do that while you're also reviewing the document. And here you can see the change that my counterparty has changed the royalty in this document from 50-50 to 80-20. So just a really quick way to get some insight into what's going on in the document. But part of what we've tried to do in Link is to make sure that once you have that insight, you can now take some action. So in this case, an action might be to make a note here and send it along to an associate or another attorney in the firm to go ahead and edit this document or fix it before I send it back to the client the counterparty. So one of the key things that we have built into Link is the ability to securely edit or annotate documents. And in this case, I'm going to do an annotation. You can do this with an Apple Pencil. You can do it with your finger. And I can very easily decide that I'm going to highlight this paragraph. And maybe I'm going to add a nice message to make sure that someone takes a look at this. And now that I'm done, from here, I can directly go ahead and email this document to whoever else in the firm I might decide wants to see it. And with just a simple tap, it's now going to get attached to an email. I can send along just the annotated page, which is the one that has the important information that I've decided is worth a second look. And now I'm inside of the link email client. This is all our own user interface for email, integrated with the document viewing and annotating capabilities that I've been showing you. And I can send this along to someone else in the firm to take a look. So if I look back at what we've done here, we have a document that we received from somebody outside of the firm. We've run a high fidelity red line using our integration with DocsCorp's CompareDocs SDK. That's the actual comparison technology under the hood. We've looked at the important changes in that document, made a markup, and sent it along to someone else to go ahead and take the next step. And that's just one example of the kinds of flows that we enable and link, all inside of this secure container environment to protect this data from all the circumstances that we discussed before. Is the dual screen view available only in a larger tablet or is it also on the iPhone? So the dual screen view is only available in larger tablets. It is a new feature of our product. This is actually breaking news here. This is uh, an app that we have, an app upgrade that we have in review with Apple right now. And one of the things that we've done with this latest release of our product is to really embrace the idea of two tasks at once. So you see the dual screen view here you can actually pull in a third task using iOS's native multitasking. So uh, if I wanted to put Zoom up next to it, I can do that. And now I have three things going on. I can look at a document, an email, and what I'm doing in Zoom. The other thing that's nice about this split screen view is that you can easily kind of readjust it and rearrange it if you decide you'd like to. And does the fact that this is in a container mean that I cannot uh, use other, uh, move this document into other apps on my uh, device? If I wanted to use native Word on my, uh, on my uh, iPad, can I do that? You can. And the reason that you can is because we've, essentially what we mean by secure container is that we have designed each integration specifically to make sure that it's secure to our stand. So the next example that I will show you is an example where I'm going to edit a document inside of the Word app, and this is using an integration that we've decided does fit our security requirements. It takes advantage of the fact that many of our customers are using mobile device management, and it allows you to directly edit a document. So let me show you that very quickly so that you can get a view for how that looks. So if I start here in iManage, 
uh, one of the things that we do is we just present a very simple mobile friendly view into your document management system. You can quickly look up a client, a matter, a file by document ID, and you can certainly go and look at the things that you were working on recently. So if I look here, you can see uh, this one, the royalty, uh, let's see, the royalty split agreement document that we were talking about. And with this email link option here, I can essentially send someone else in my firm a, a DMS link directly to the document. So I could say, hey, take a look at this and make some edits on my behalf. Rather than send it this way, I've already sent it to myself for this demo. So we'll switch back over here. So now I've received this document management link, whether that's a hyperlink for work 10 or net documents, or it's an NRL, which is uh, common to all I manage versions. And I can just go ahead and say, now I want to edit it. And I go ahead and I tap the edit button. And now link is going to check out the document prepared for editing in Word. And we have a managed integration with Word, which means we take this one file, we pull it out of our own proprietary encryption system, we encrypt it using iOS's native encryption, just that one file, and we let you edit it. Okay, so now I can just make a small change. And then part of what we mean by completing the flow here is that when you come back into Link, Link is going to detect that you've edited this document. And now you see that Link is saying, you have unsaved changes to this document. I simply go ahead and tap on that document. And now I have a way to check it back into my document management system. What would happen if I were working on a document in Link uh, that I had checked out for my DMS and for some reason the app closes inadvertently? So part of what we're doing here is we've built Link on top of a native file system that is an encrypted file system of our own creation. So we do store things locally. It's not that uh, while the applications that you're seeing, the actual user interface is a web application served from behind the firewall, there is a tight integration with everything that's going on locally, which means if you lose it, you come back right to it. Uh, if the app crashes or you're, you run out of battery on your device, we have to recognize that at any moment your mobile device might just go off because the battery dies and you get back right to where you were without any issue. And the same thing applies if you go online or offline. Obviously, most of the time nowadays you're online, but we have to handle the case where you lose network connectivity or you're in a place where there is none. And so we have an entire local storage area here on the device uh, inside of the app that you can access. We call it My Files. And here you can go and you can look at, for example, all of the files that you've viewed in the last seven days. So if you want to find something that you were looking at a few days ago, you easily can. And you can look at things that you recently edited. This is a document that I annotated and using the PDF annotation feature. And you can look at things that have been deleted, or you can even browse by where you downloaded it from. So here I've got client matter and link is automatically categorizing documents to make it easy for me to find them. So one last thing that I wanted to show you before we just switch to complete discussion is that I, I've already mentioned that PDF annotation is built into link. And PDF annotation, one good use is markup to be able to communicate to someone else that there's some work to be done. Another neat thing you can do is you can sign documents. Uh, and we've made it really easy to do that and also just generally to annotate attachments and send them back to the person that you got them from. Uh, and, and we find this to be just a really useful thing that is per perhaps more useful than we thought it would be when we first developed it. So here I can go ahead and using Link's PDF annotation, I can insert a signature. This is a fake signature, obviously. And now all I need to do is I close out the document and Link is going to figure out that I've made some changes to an annotation and ask me what I want to do here. And it gives me the opportunity to, with a single tap, just reply to this email with the documents attached to it. That's the second uh, box in this overlay. And now I go ahead and I can send back to the sender, who happened to be me, this signed document. And this is just another example of how we've pulled together a set of things that make a complete workflow into our app put it into a secure environment and try to make it as easy as possible to get work done. So the last thing that I'll show you before I wrap up my demo here is just, uh, we do incorporate the intranet into the product. And at first we thought that email and files would be the most exciting 
But I think increasingly we're finding much more balanced view where especially larger firms have quite a lot of rich information on the internet that they'd like to put into attorney's hands. And the various machinations of authentications and VPNs and tunnels that are required to get that to work with the native device Safari are just really difficult to administer and also really difficult for users to use. So we've built the intranet into Link. It's really as simple as saying, here's a URL and point the Link app to it and we'll do our very best to give a nice single sign-on experience. And also IT can kind of curate which links or which tiles they want people to see. So make it really easy to browse the intranet in this sort of tile-based way. And so here we have our sample intranet portal, which is just to give you a, a real life visual of what it might be like to mobilize your intranet. And obviously this is everything from your firm directory to office maps to you know news and information that might be useful to attorneys. So I think that's all that I wanted to show you with the demo. Seth, one other kind of security related question, which is uh, what would happen if I were to just lose my iPad? I left it on the seat at the airport and have no idea what happened to it. Sure. The first thing that we do to make sure that we're protecting access to sensitive systems, and obviously link tunnels right into your sensitive systems, your email and your DMS, is that we use SSL certificates. So the SSL certificate two-way handshake that we do ensures that unless IT has provisioned you to access this particular instance of our link infrastructure, you really can't even get to the authentication page. But if you lose your device or you leave it sitting in, in the airport, obviously you have the certificate because it's already been provisioned to you. The next thing we do is we use your standard Windows credentials, your Active Directory credentials to authenticate users. So at some point you have to put a password in to get into this app. So IT might say, I'd like that to happen once every day, or I'd like it to happen once every hour or once every week or even once every month. Those parameters are fairly flexible. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have another timeout that says, how often do I need to prompt for either Touch ID or a separate link pin code, which is easy, to, easy enough to do when it's your own device, but handles that case where you're, you drop the device at the airport and someone's just browsing, trying to browse through it and see if they can find anything interesting. And then, of course, once you've told IT that this device is lost, they can go ahead and delete it on the infrastructure side, and we'll make sure that all the data is wiped from it immediately. Great, thank you. Questions or thoughts? Well, two quick questions. Uh, how do you price it, and how would a firm get started using this? Good questions. We price this per user per year, and for up to five devices per user, that's not a hard and fast limit. It's more of an informal limit that we set with our customers. Uh, and that can be a combination of Android and iOS devices and phones and tablets, doesn't matter to us. And we start our pricing at $140 per user per year. And to get started, we offer a free trial, which is a great opportunity for us to first figure out how our infrastructure is going to fit in with the, the firm that's in question. For firms that are heavily cloud-based, we can work in a more cloud-oriented way. And for those that are still very focused on on-premise infrastructure, we can certainly work that way as well. Uh, and we work with them to deploy our infrastructure, which is all virtualized. So it's just a matter of installing some virtual appliances uh, into their on-premise environment, if that's the way they want to go, and setting up the access to these various resources. I manage email, uh, Windows file shares if they have them, the internet. And then we ask our customers to spend a few weeks experiencing the product and seeing if it's a good fit for them. It's really as simple as that. So many firms are working with teams these days. Uh, do you have any plans to uh, bring teams into this? So we don't have plans to bring Teams or Zoom or any of those apps directly into our container. And there's a good reason for that. Part of why we invested instead in the multitasking view that I was talking about before is that the, the idea is that you can place Teams side by side with Link. And we have all the right ways to take files that you might get sent in Teams and pull them into Link and push them into DMS and email them and all of that. But we want to keep separation of the different sandboxes of sensitive data as much as possible. That way, if Teams is compromised through some kind of a Microsoft security flaw, that doesn't impact us and vice versa. So from a security perspective, we want things to be 
easy. We want to make it really easy for things to work together, but not to combine them unless there's a good reason to do that. So for the moment, teams will be separate, but you can put it right side by side there with link and you can work on your documents and your email while you're working in teams. Makes sense. Is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know about the link app? I think the last thing that I would say is that I, the link app brings together a number of different individual features, document comparison, email, PDF annotation, image annotation, document editing, all on an iPad. And one of the things that's hard to see in a demo and hard to see unless you experience the product is that the power of Lincoln is in how we stitch them together. We're so used to this file system oriented view of how we work. We save something from Microsoft Word, we attach it to an email. And Link is in its own way trying to break that paradigm. We're trying to, to think instead of always save to the file system, instead think what's the next step? I edited a document, what's the next step? I wanna upload it or email it or continue editing it. And Link tries to always think through what those next steps are. And while it might take a little bit of getting used to, I think in the end, once you get the hang of it, it's a much faster way to work. And on top of that, we do it in a way that's much more secure all around. Thanks, Seth. Uh, I understand uh, you have an offer you'd like to share with the viewers of this program? I think the offer that we'd like to share is an extended free trial. We are pleased to offer a six week free trial to any users uh, who, who find us here. And all you need to do, there's no special code, just mention that you found us on Law Sites, How It Works, and we look forward to working with you. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate your time and a really interesting product. That's it for this episode of How It Works. Uh, find the full series at Law Sites blog. This is Bob Ambrosi. hope you'll join us next time for another episode of How It Works.